We are back with our last Q&A of the night. It is time for your presidential candidates running for your elections 2015. Would you like to come and have a seat on our sofa? So before, oh, we're, we're deciding where we're sitting on the sofa. I just want to be near you both. Thank Aww. you, Ben. Right, so before we introduce Ben and Seb here on the sofa, let's talk a little bit more about the role that President entails. Debatably, King of the Susu Jungle, this is the role that we're looking at. They provide overall responsibility for the union, leading on the interests of the union as a whole. They are acting as the figurehead of the union, the face, if you like, behind public speaking and managing relations locally. And they're providing a leadership role to the sabbatical team whilst chairing the trustee board. A lot of stuff comes under this remit. Obviously, we'll give you a minute to introduce yourselves. Okay, hi everyone. I am Ben. Since I arrived at SUSU, I've sort of been a jack of all trades. I like to think of master of you as well. I've done AU, I've done PA, I've done media, I've done JCRs. Um, and I've just developed a real passion for SUSU and finding out how it works, you know, what makes the students tick. And I want to carry that on as SUSU president. Lovely. Hi, my name is Sebastian Vogelpohl. I'm a third year history and philosophy student. Um, I'm also the founder and current president of Mod United Nations. I also sit on the Committee for Debating Society and as many societies as I can get involved with, I try and get involved. I'm not here so much for an attraction with SUSU as a dissatisfaction with SUSU. Um, I've noticed problems in the university that I think SUSU has the ability to change and I've noticed things wrong with SUSU that as the president of a society and someone involved with lots of societies uh, thinks can improve for the better of this university to allow the university and the societies to thrive as much as possible. So we've got our hands in all the pies here on this sofa. Um, let's kick off with the first question of the Q&A for the Union President role. Um, both of you, so what do you think is the single biggest issue affecting the Union at the moment? So talking about SUSU, what is the biggest issue that you feel like needs to be tackled? Uh, sure. Um, I don't think SUSU does a very good job of communicating itself to the students. So I do think currently SUSU does good things, but I don't think we see SUSU. I don't think we see the VPs coming to societies and so forth. And I think societies really are the lifeblood of SUSU and they're what you know, makes SUSU a great thing. So I find it disappointing that even when we have able presidents and able VP candidates that we don't see them and that they don't communicate well to them and that society don't know often how to communicate with SUSU. I mean, there's different funding requirements and one isn't always sure which one to tick off. There's, you know, you're, you're never quite sure where you stand with SUSU and it's just this general confusion about where one, how one interacts with it that is the biggest problem. Ben, you both show a common interest of a slight dissatisfaction with SUSU, if I can get my words out. Do you think Seb's right? Do you feel like you never see VPs and presidents? And do you feel like that's the issue with the union? Or what, what do you think the issue is? I think if you know where to look for the VPs, you can find them, which isn't ideal, but it's better than never seeing them. Um, but I do agree. I think Susu, Susu has an image problem. And at the minute, it kind of has the vibe, as I said in my manifesto, of an awkward relative who's like at your party and is sort of trying to be like, hey, tell us what's going on, please. And it needs to be a lot more vibrant. It needs to be a student voice. It needs to be student-led. It needs to know where to go on nights out. It needs to um, provide student services. It needs to refresh its student clubs to make sure that people are joining them because they're interested, not because they felt sort of bullied into it and freshers by everybody going, join us, please join us. It's just, it's not ideal. So I think once Susu's image problem is fixed, people will join out of interest. So if we're looking a little bit more deeply at your manifestos then, Sebastian, I'm going to start with you. Absolutely. A lot of your points seem to be as if you're applying for the wrong role. Maybe they should have been for VP education. Main one I'm going to pick out is how you want to reduce the late penalty from 10% to 5%. Firstly, why? Why do you think that is a good idea? Surely the high punishment is there for a reason, so that people don't hand in their work late and it stops them wanting to in the future. Um, no, I'll answer that um, policy first. That seems to be one of my Marmite policies in that a lot of people come up to me, they say it's great, and then some other people, they're not sure about it. But I think they're unsure about it for the wrong reasons. I think 
we can't be put a paintbrush here. So there's a lot of students who obviously don't struggle to get on, things on on time. This isn't a policy for them. And I don't think changing the penalty will mean less people will give in their uh, work on time. Because I think any diligent student, any student who cares about their degree, will still give in their work on time. Should that not be all students, but, then? But let me continue. Because it is not the case, first of all, that this is in the case in all universities. So there's Nottingham, there's Sussex, there's Liverpool, there's Birmingham, to name but a few that have a 5% currently. And, you know, when we're going out of university, we're competing them. And I, I can't honestly believe that firms go, ooh, 5%, yeah, no, you're not getting the role he is. Um, and well, obviously, I also... the, the student, obviously, the league tables aren't the be-all and end of it, but these mm. universities you're mentioning are above and below us. They're dotted all around us in terms of um, student satisfaction with learning. Do you not sure. feel that... Um, basing stuff on other universities isn't the way forward for CC. No, I'm not basing it. I, I think it, it's an, a good example of the fact that it works. But I think there is such a leap when you come from comprehensive education to university education that it's better to have this difference because it shouldn't be the be-all and end-all if you had one work in late by one day that that means the difference between a 2-1 and a 2-2 or a first and a 2-1. No, I don't understand why that should be the case. But ben, obviously this doesn't appear in your manifesto. We're going to move on to Ben now. Ben, what do you think about this point? Um, I think Seb has honourable intentions of not letting one late piece of work mean the difference in your final classification. But I think that you need to look at that from a student's point of view. If they're right on that borderline of their classification, they're going to try to get their work in on time. And yes, things crop up that are unavoidable, but that is why the special consideration system is in place, which I know Seb doesn't quite believe works fully. But I think that students who care do get their work in on time. Those that do have issues, if an issue comes up that stops you getting your work in on the deadline, it's probably come up just before the deadline, and a conscientious student has it done. I'm not saying lateness doesn't happen for good reason, but I think that to remove the policy does um, de-incentivise handing work in on time. So if we go back to the main questions, I, Amelia, you've got, we're going to have to move on, we've got a time I should have a chance to reply to that, I'm Literally sorry. Literally two seconds, Seb, that's all you've got. Okay, so I don't think it's fair to brush up and say that's all students, because not all students can get on, on time, and that doesn't mean they're bad students, it just means they're not fully prepared for university environment. But if and you're we bringing it in them. for first years, first year doesn't even count for grades, so what's the point? Because I think it's very demotivational. If you were a student who could have got a 2-1 or could have got a first and you were doing well and you were you coming have up with creative a ideas. Harder. Right, let's move on to a different topic here in the bridge. Yeah, let's go back to the Twitter questions. So this is for both of you now. So how are you going to address the issue The students believe that SABs do not contribute anything towards the union and comment that you have done nothing all year? How are you going to change that? Ben, do you want to start? Um, yeah, I think at the minute, SUSU tries its best to communicate what it is it's been doing to its students, but it's always put forward as SUSU has just done this and SUSU has just done that, which is fantastic for telling students what we've done. But behind every big decision that's made like that, there are staff members and there are SABs who go nameless. So to sit and say the SAB's done nothing all year when they've actually been the driving force behind some of the biggest changes you've seen, I think doesn't credit them properly. And so when we're making those communications, we're putting up the Facebook posts and we're releasing the news stories, it's really important to be able to say this SAB was behind this choice and these roles were at the meetings where this made possible, was made possible, which both makes SABs more accountable and more creditable for their actions and also means that when people wonder which student roles to apply for, they know which roles got involved with what it was they saw and they liked. So, what do you think of this viewpoint that um, VPs and presidents are slacking, as it might be seen as? Um, I don't know if they're slacking or if they're not. I mean, I sometimes see that they've come up with some very good ideas. I think our current president, you know, the free language thing, that's great. The enterprise thing, that's great. But I don't see these things. So, the biggest... Um, Thing, first of all has to be communication the second most important thing is it's not good enough if they're just in an office all the time it should be the case that they are actually coming to the societies and as for you know student leaders when it comes into education like you know the your academic head for history or whatever, how many people stand for most of these positions It's barely anyone so I think we need to also improve um, and try and encourage more people to stand for those positions so that there is competition so that we end up with uh, the most competent candidates possible Okay, so Ben, it's now your turn. So you want to build a new student theatre, um, and you do mention that you've got the, that we've got the annex, but you just don't think it's good enough. Realistically, can you achieve building a new one in a year? Can we afford it, and where would it go? 
realistically in a year, it's not going to happen. You know, I can't, you know, I can't make miracles. But there is definite need to lay groundwork for future development in Susu, and there is currently this half a million pound grant for a feasibility survey into what can be done. I think a big idea would be uh, raising the Susu building up another couple of levels on the area, if you look out of that window, that you can see, because we don't just destroy green space on campus and a theatre could go in there. It's not necessarily a PA focus, but it's more an issue with creating space for more students. At the minute, the Cube is a highly contested space. Student groups all want it. And lots of things that do go on in there could be moved to a theatre if it was also doubling up as a conference venue. In terms of financial feasibility, straight away it might not be, but if you see it more as an investment than just as a one-off cost, it's not a bad idea, because in the off-season, Susu can make money back on a theatre as a conference venue from ticket prices when PA groups do use it. We can also have the Annex running, and at the minute, I think, in the Annex, there's a show every week but three that the stage shop have off. So if we split that time, the show's going to be better prepared to go into each one. I think that in the long run, it will provide more money back into Susu, although there will be a great initial cost. Do you not think by having both, at some point, one will become redundant to the other? Not necessarily, because I think there'll be a different in, difference in size. I don't want to build the next, you know, like national opera theatre on top of Susu at all. But I think that smaller shows, individual student projects, um, and small meetings, those can take place in the annex. Big shows, the big productions, the ones that all fight out for the pitch uh, for the slot that we have in the Nuffield each year. Those can be the ones that we move into the biggest student theatre if it becomes achieved. Well, if we go back to another Twitter question, and this is probably one of the most important questions we've seen all night. Obviously, as President, you're acting as CEO of a, a company, as it seems. Um, you will have to make difficult staffing and financial decisions as president. Do you think you're up to this? Do you think you can handle this, making these such critical decisions? Ben, if you want to start. I think so. I think that if I sat here and said that I wasn't, it would probably destroy a lot of the faith that people in this room might have in me. So there's not a disaster that one. Yes, I think I can. But I, I think that it's important to do so respectfully and decently if you're making difficult staffing choices. And one of the reasons I think that I'm suited for that role is that um, I don't take myself seriously on a 24-7 basis, so I'm approachable and I'm friendly, but when, when the hard work needs doing, the difficult decisions you need making, don't underestimate both my ability to do so, but like, don't judge me on the friendly appearance because there is someone hardworking and dedicated to see someone underneath it. But I think that those decisions that are difficult and that might produce you know, a bit of uh, contention between students are made more palatable by having someone in charge who can who can take the flack and who can take the criticism and still come out smiling. So, what do you think about making such critical decisions in Susu? I hope I never have to make such a critical decision. I mean, as leader of a society, I made sure, I mean, I took pot money out of my own pocket to try and get everyone possible to go to a modern United Nations conference in Cambridge. So, I'm always trying to put, make sure that I'm making the cuts to myself first before I make cuts to anyone else. But I am the sort of person you want to lead this because I am adaptable. I'm the person, I'm someone who founded a society and I'm someone who led one. And even before this, my lifestyle as someone who, I grew up in lots of different countries. I've never lived in a house more than four years. I've always had to sort of live on my feet. So I know how to adapt. I know how to change. I know how to deal with failure. And I know how to come over it and break past those boundaries. And that's part of the reason why I've suggested all these policies about supporting people, helping aspiration, and making things in SUSU more open. OK, so beyond, obviously, making tough decisions, um, you're going to be the figurehead for SUSU. You're going to be the... Um the voice for Susu as a whole, and you're going to be the person that people look to. Have you got any experience in public speaking, or have you got any experience in um, making yourself known and expressing yourself, maybe in a different way other than just um, at talk? Um, Sebastian, if you want to go first. Um, when it comes to public speaking, I've been doing that for quite a while, obviously being involved with debating, involved with Model United Nations. But I also enjoy sort of lighter elements. I, I, I like nonsense. I, I like to talk frivolously about sort of things that aren't necessarily always important. But I'm always happy to, to make myself heard. I'm, I, I'm, I, I enjoy speaking, and I enjoy talking to people. And I also, I'm a great listener. I really enjoy hearing what other people have to say, because, yeah, I think that's probably the most important thing about the role, is to be able to listen to others. Ben, you may not have a debating background, but do you show skills in public speaking and being confident elsewhere? Um, I think so. I think this, this question kind of has a tangent to the issue is are the Susu elections a popularity contest? And I think that they boil down to similar things in that the things that make a person in Echo is popular because it's such a cheesy word for it is are things like being charismatic, joining societies, getting involved, maintaining good relationships with the people you meet in all your roles. And those are the kinds of things that I do believe I've done since I got to Susu. I've joined societies and I've made friendships and um, I I'm very proficient with social media. I've worked for, social, for Susu Comms Crew because I enjoy that so much. And I think these just show that 
I can engage people, I can get people interested. The Anaconda video I made, I think, is already on about 2,500 <laughs> views, which is fantastic, it's phenomenal, it's surpassed anything even I thought, but it's because of my experience in engaging people and making them hear what it is I want to say that's made it such a success. That is brilliant. So I think it's time to have a little bit of a roundup of any points you wanted to say and weren't able to, and basically why everyone should vote for you. Sebastian, do you want to start? Um, sure, I'll just go over what I'm trying to stand for. So I'm trying to stand, I have three pillars, which are openness, <laughs> aspiration, and support. So in terms of openness, I want to sort of put all the different parts of SUSU together in one kind of handbook. I want, um, I want to make, in terms of aspiration, I want to continue upon an existing enterprise project. I want to further that. I want to make that stronger so we collect, uh, connect people with businesses. We allow people to go and have those startup opportunities. To that extent, I also want to make certain aspects of the university extracurricular credit bearing so that students don't just think about their degree, they also think about what they do outside of that so they become more well-rounded and they become stronger for it. In terms of support, obviously the decreasing from the 10% to the 5%, but also better communicating special considerations because nobody really understands it at the moment, including the lecturers, not just the students, and that really desperately needs to be fixed. Um, and I think by putting all these things out there, by putting forward what I mean and how you can judge me, whether I've been successful next year, I have set up failure and success standards so you know and you can judge me as whether I have failed or whether I have succeeded at the we end of We just move to Ben because we're running out of time here. Ben, your key points is why you're the main man for the job. Um, my manifesto has loads of ideas which function similarly to says manifesto in that you can see at the end of the year whether they're met or not. A manifesto is sort of a checklist of your promises. But those three main ideas that they come into are repairing Susu's image, in doing so, cultivating more interest for students both looking to come to university and currently at the university, and creating a better space filled with top level facilities and looking to Susu's future, both expanding physically and into the student community. Brilliant. So, can we give it up for our presidential candidates 2015? <laughs> Lovely handshake there to symbolise what has been quite a hard fought evening. We've <laughs> grilled the candidates. The, the candidates have grilled me as well. It's, this has all happened here in the bridge. Thank you for listening here at the Q&A session 2015. We will see you next week on Friday for Elections Night Live to find out who has won each role.